think it's a no-brainer for a government that would extend a timetable for a Brexit transition, given the global crisis that's engulfed all of our lives, to do anything else would be ludicrous. It would be like driving 30 miles to test your eyesight. <laughs> Trade agreements are long and complex processes, and the transition was already tight before the Covid crisis put a spanner in the works. Now, any decent deal is looking beyond reach, nor is there parliamentary time to properly scrutinise whatever might be agreed. Yet we have a government that doesn't care about doing decent deals done in the full light of day or that has, and has it set its face against the scrutiny of its actions. Nailing the detail is not a strength of this administration on even far easier questions. On the COVID-19 strategy, for example, you would have thought they would have an angle on what they actually wanted to achieve by now. Yet when I asked the government whether elimination was part of the plan, I received a holding reply on the 6th of July, telling me the government cannot answer the question within the normal time frame. How can we trust them with the time frame for Brexit when they still don't even know what they expect to achieve from this situation? This is not a principled government, but a reckless one. We know they are reckless with public health advice, and Dominic Cummings' hazy drive to Durham during lockdown is testimony to that. Public anger over the hypocrisy was brushed off and we were told to move on and another case of do as we do, do as we say and not as we do. And the signs don't look good for a post-Brexit decision either. Since refusal to negotiate sensibly with our European partners has locked the UK out of the successful Galileo satellite programme, they've recently gambled £500 million in a share of a bankrupt satellite company, OneWeb hoping they can tack navigation capabilities onto the wrong type of satellites. I say 500 million, as that's been what's been reported in the media. When I asked the question formally, I was told that this was a figure that couldn't be disclosed as it was commercially sensitive. There's no public scrutiny, no business plan and no risk assessment published for this decision, which by all accounts goes against the better judgment of experts such as those in the UK Space Agency. With activities like these, is it any wonder that many people would question if this government can even tell their earth for their elbow? Back in 1995, George Robertson, as Shadow Secretary of State for Scotland, famously said, devolution would kill Scottish nationalism stone dead. Here we are, 25 years later, and the Scottish independence cause is very much alive and stronger than ever. Meanwhile, the uncompromising actions of British Brexiteers looks like the actual move that will kill the Union stone dead. Devolution, albeit in its limited present form, has allowed the people of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to develop their own solutions rather than the towing the line from the Tories. It's let people across these isles know that their voices matter and that we can aspire to more instead of just simply taking what we're given. At Scotland's modern, transparent Parliament in Holyrood, people have elected a government which better reflects their views respects evidence, listens to experts and cares about the poor. But this current Tory administration can't allow such a thing. They seek to put us back in our box. And they'll dismantle the democratic structures so hard won by the people of Scotland. Lord Robertson may not have been the most honourable intentions in backing a Scottish Parliament, but there were many in the Labour Party who recognise and cherish its role. We in the SNP, together with them at that time, and we must stand together again now, as the institutions are disgracefully disrespected by the actions of this government. Even as recently as 2015, Gordon Brown was promising greater devolution and, and home rule. It is unfortunate, therefore, that the party of home rule has apparently forgotten its roots, and it is certainly shown by the pity that so few of them here today. This is a government... One. <laughs> few. This is a government which has torn up the respect agenda, which has at least given lip service to their predecessors. The growing culture of disrespect has been brought into sharp focus with Brexit. Scotland, of course, voted to stay in the European Union by a strong majority in every constituent part. The hostility displayed towards Europe by Brexiteers, the thinly veiled xenophobia from some, was abhorrent on these benches as it was to the people we represent. After the Brexit vote, the Scottish Government tried to find the least damaging compromise, yet it was rejected. On devolved competencies, this Government has seen no need to negotiate and reach agreement with the Scottish Parliament, and they just press ahead regardless. Their actions have not gone unnoticed. Now is the time for Scotland to rejoin our European cousins as an equal 
independent nation. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Mid Lothian. Uh, his wonderful accent, uh, huge passion and an interesting perspective. Um, after so much dilly-dally, dither and delay, the United Kingdom finally left the 